Hello and welcome to my video. In this video I'm going to show you the bike that I used for the Silk Road mountain race which is a 2000 kilometer off-road race around Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia. I've just got back back to the UK and as you can see the bike is still dirty from the race. I've not really touched much so I thought I'd just give you a run through and uh, yeah talk to you about the bike, what worked, what didn't and um, yeah my thoughts on the event. So if you don't know the Silk Road mountain race is a 2000 kilometer race around the mountains in Kyrgyzstan. There's lots of high altitude, lots of really rough washboard tracks, high mountain passes, extreme cold, extreme heat, storms, anything you want. So the bike that I chose to take that on is the Mason Raw, which is Mason's steel hardtail mountain bike. Now this is actually the bike I used for the Highland Trail race earlier this year. And to be honest, it worked really well there. So the basis of it um, is the same as that race. I did make a few modifications, however, for the Silk Road Mountain Race. I need to carry quite a bit more equipment. The Silk Road Mountain Race, it, it took me just under eight days, but I was factoring on being out there for a, around 10 days, um, you know, in worst case scenario. Um, extreme temperatures and weather, as I said. So I had to, had to pack for the occasion. And the Raw is a nice, you know strong bike um really stable on the load and also i think riding a mountain bike is best for this event having suspension and a suspension seat post really saved the day um, and also because of the climbs i had a you know a nice upright position and that made it a lot, a lot more comfortable as i've already mentioned the frame is a steel frame so it did actually tubing uh, it's actually a reynolds down tube totally bomb proof it's actually the same or very similar tube set to that that's used on the, the Mason in search of, uh, which is a bike I'm very familiar with. So super comfortable, um, quite a long wheelbase, not really a problem in Kyrgyzstan because there aren't that many sort of tight corners. And actually it was really stable over the really rough washboard roads. Up front, I'm running the RockShox Sid Ultimate Fork, 120 millimeters, performed flawlessly, got the lockout on there. That's just on the left-hand side remote. Um, so I'd lock the, the, the fork out for the climbs. And yeah, no problems there at all. I've gone for the trusty Shimano XT 12 speed uh, mechanical group set. Um, in actual fact, I didn't actually change the cable um, from, from the Highland Trail race as it was working really smooth. Uh, I probably should have as by the end of the race, it was getting a little bit sticky, but it works. Um, I trust it. There's no batteries to go flat. Um, I carried a spare cable with me just in case, uh, but I didn't change anything in it, you know, it's nice and simple and it works. And that's the key when you've got all these kind of uh, environmental factors and tough days racing, lack of sleep, you just want your bike to work. I have actually upgraded the, the bearings in the drivetrain. Um, I'm running enduro bearings. Um, I've actually got the Maxit bearings in the bottom bracket and the headset. Again, same ones I use for Highland Trail. They've got a lifetime warranty. I've not touched them. They're silky smooth. Um, again, reliability is key and you know I trust them just to keep working. Um, and I've also got the XT15 jockey wheels in here. Uh, again, no problems whatsoever running silky smooth. So yeah, it's, it's a yes from me. One thing I did change over the Highland Trail setup was the wheels and the tires. So for the Highland Trail, if you've not seen that video, um, go back and just check out uh, you know exactly what I did. I did a bike check there, um, but I'm running some slightly lighter wheels here. So I was running the, run, running the Proven XC rims there, which are like a 30 mil internal, super wide. Um, but these are actually some custom wheels. Um, I get them made for the Hunt Beyond riders. So uh, like Sofian was using them to win the race, Justinus in third place and a couple of other riders, exactly the same spec. So they're basically, um, they're custom builds. They're the 25 limitless gravel rim, which is, uh, like I say, it's quite a wide gravel rim, but for, it's, it's like a mountain bike rim from a couple of years back. Um, and it tends to suit these, the slightly narrower tires you run for this kind of, um, it's not really a mountain bike race as such. I'd say it's probably extreme gravel maybe. Um, there's not any single track, so you don't necessarily need the massive volume tires. Um, so yeah, I run those rims. Um, Son Dynamo front hub, J-Bend spokes, um, 28 spoke, uh, and want just the trail wide, uh, or the, the Hunt Trail mountain bike rear hub. Again, bomb proof, that's what you want for this kind of race. Um, and this saves quite a bit of weight. They're about 1600 grams with the Dynamo, so pretty lightweight. And they match up really well to my, my tire of choice for this kind of event. It's the Renault Fleece Ridge, 55 millimeters. I run the endurance casing. I'm not willing to risk a, a, a lighter tire. Um, they do the standard casing, but you know, it's, 
it's slightly less rolling resistance, but if you puncture, it's gonna cost you way more time. So I go for endurance casing, no problems. You can see the sidewalls have a bit scuffed, but you know, no, no cuts or anything like that. Absolutely no punctures. I pumped them up in the UK before I left for the race and didn't touch them until I pumped them up um, a couple of days ago on my return, uh, running about 30 odd PSI in there, maybe a little bit more for the start. Um, and yeah, they run really well. Um, and nice and fast and efficient. I've already briefly touched on the fact I'm running a suspension seat post. This is the Redshift suspension seat post. I really rate it, I really recommend it. Um, when you're riding down these washboard roads, it just really takes it out of you and just being able to sit down and pedal, it's, it's a tiny bit of travel in there and um, you know, it really does make a difference to your comfort, especially over the course of a race like Silk Road. You know, you're out there for a minimum of a week, potentially up to, you know, 10, 12 days, uh, depending on your pace. Um, and I paired that with an Ergon all-road core saddle. Again, super comfortable. Same one I use for the Highland Trail race, and it works really well for me. Now onto the cockpit, and same bars I use for the Highland Trail, super wide, they're 760 mil. I quite like a wide bar, especially on these long climbs, because you can really open up your chest, especially at altitude where the oxygen is lacking. Um, a few changes I've made though, um, I'm running these Ergon grips, these are GS2s. I actually do have some newer ones to fit on there, um, but they turned up quite late. And the shape is ever so different to these, and I just got used to them, so I decided just to keep these old ones, even though they are in a bit of a weird lime color. Um, I'm also running these, they're modified Redshift gravel bar grips. Uh, I did actually have them on for the Highland Trail, but I had them wrapped in bar tape, but I found they were comfier without, so I've taken them off, um, I'm just running them, and it gives me a nice kind of um, hand position, uh, sort of closer in the bars. When you're on the kind of the rough washboard roads, you don't necessarily want to be in the, the sort of aero bars, so that gave me a nice kind of middle position. Speaking of aero bars, I did fit some on there. Um, there's, there are these Data Metal Blast little triathlon bars. I've used them quite a lot. I mean, you don't. Re I don't really think you need a full-on time trial set or time trial bar set up for the Silk Road because there is a lot of climbing. There's a lot of rough roads, and quite often enough, I found myself just up on the bar ends um, with my, my arms nice and wide. However, when it was slightly smoother, I did use them. Um, they're not too heavy, not too big. They don't get in the way, so I really, really rate those. Also on the bars, obviously the brakes. Shimano XT, super reliable, bled them for the race, no problems at altitude, um, everything really good. As I said before, I've got my, my lockout on the left-hand side and my shifter on the right-hand side. Navigation-wide, I'm running the Wahoo Roam, absolutely zero problems. I charged it off the dynamo, running the K-Lite system. You can see the switch under the bars here. And then in the other side of the bag, I had the unit with the USB charger. I just kept the cable plugged in all the time and then I just pull it in and out of the um, the plug as and when I need it and yeah no problems at all I just made sure that I charged going down mountains because obviously you're going quite slow on the way up and it wouldn't really pull enough charge to charge it up but with careful management there was no issues I also have my trusty Casio watch on there sometimes I get asked why I carry a watch with me well you need to tell the time you need to tell your alarm uh, set your alarm and quite often my phone is turned off and Phones can break, phones can go flat, as Sofian found out when he won it, smashed his phone on the first day and he had to wake up with the sun every day. So it's always good to have a backup. Then on the front here, I've got the K-Lite light. Um, I've got the mountain bike one, such a massive wide beam, just illuminates the whole trail. And I found that especially good when you're really tired at the end of a race. Like you don't, when you have a small beam of light, it's quite hard and quite stressful on your eyes. So flooding the trail totally allows your eyes to relax a bit. And it now onto the bags. Um, I won't show you what's inside them in this video. I'll do a separate video um, for that uh, because I can go into depth with gear. Uh, but essentially I'm running the Tailfin R&D Division custom bags. So I've been running these for a while. The, the frame bag I use for Highland Trail and the front bag, um, they just work really well for me. Uh, so in the frame bag, I, quite a lot of space in here was dedicated to food. Quite remote, it's quite remote on the on the Silk Road mountain race. Resupply is sparse, maybe once or twice a day if you're lucky. So I needed to carry a lot of food and I actually started with quite a lot of high calorie food just to see me through, which I was actually very grateful for uh, during the race. The lower compartment is all my tools and spares and a mini pump in there. Again, tucked out the way. The heavier stuff I like to keep low down on the bike just to help that weight. I also had two bottles, um, two one litre bottles. Um, 
So I, I, I kind of ended up drinking out of this one. One thing I found on the Silk Road race is you're going through a lot of pasture land. There's a lot of animals, um, sheep, cows, horses, and therefore that means there's a lot of muck. Um, so yeah, that, the bottle downstairs, the, underneath the down tube, that got absolutely covered in essentially shit. Um, so by the end, I, ended up, I didn't bother drinking out of it. One of my biggest fears of the race was getting sick. A few people did get sick. Um, you don't want a bacteria infection in your stomach during you know, an already quite intensive um, race. So as the race continued, I ended up just, every time I wanted to refill my water, I just poured it out of that bottle into that bottle just to try and keep things sanitary as that's tucked away a little bit more. Also use chlorine every time I stopped for water, even tap water. Um, I just wasn't willing to take any risk getting ill. I, I was actually sick as soon as I arrived in Kyrgyzstan. Thankfully it, it moved away, or it, it, it was better by the race, but yeah, it was a nice little warn, warning and um, in the race itself, I had no problems. In the front pack, I had all my layers. So rain layers, insulated layers, arm warmers, leg warmers, that kind of thing. Um, so I could easily access it um, without having to sort of get off the bike put things on really easily, put them away really easily. Um, and the, the netting on the front, that was absolutely invaluable for putting food in, keeping my litter there. Things I needed close at hand uh, that I'd use regularly, like chlorine tablets, I just put in there. So they were all, always available and I didn't have to go rummaging through my bags. So yeah, really good piece of kit. Um, thoroughly recommend using that. Um, top tube bag, this is the flip top bag, 1.5 liters. Uh, I kept stuff in there that I, I'd, I'd, I'd need sort of fairly regularly um, things like my multi-tool multi dyno plug, sunscreen, um, you know, some toiletries and my camera because, you know, it's, I don't know when I'm going to go back to Kyrgyzstan, so I took loads of photos, um, which hopefully you'll be able to see soon. And then finally, onto the real rear pack. This is a custom aero pack from Tailfin. I've used it quite a lot now. It's an original prototype. Um, the design has been somewhat refined since uh, this was made, but it still works really good. In the back here, I had my sleeping gear and my my down jacket and i put extra food in there as and when i needed um, again i'll dig all of that out in a separate video um, so keep your eyes peeled for that so that is the bike i used for the silk road mountain race worked really well for me um, changes i'd make uh, probably not an awful lot to be honest uh, i ran a 32 tooth chain ring maybe i would have run a 30 tooth um, i was definitely um, would have been keen to have that towards the end of the race um, but apart from that there wasn't really anything I, don't, I think I'd change. Everything worked really well. No mechanical problems, which is the main thing. Uh, and I got around the race, ended up in seventh place um, and was pushing for fifth. So yeah, it's, uh, it was all pretty satisfactory for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, keep an eye out for the kit check video, which will be out soon. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, give us a subscribe if you like this kind of stuff and see you all soon.